Hi, it's Randy Horwitz again with the Andrew Weil Center for Integrative Medicine. Now we're going to discover a little bit about the COVID-19 mRNA vaccines. Of the vaccines that are available, these are the most prominent vaccines right now. Get an idea of how fast these were developed. Let's take a peek at the timeline. So the virus was discovered probably end of December, first week of January, and by mid-January, the scientists in China had sequenced the RNA from the COVID-2 virus, and that was published. Several months later, the first U.S. clinical trial began. This was of the Moderna vaccine. This is two months after the sequence was published. It's the speed with which you can generate synthetically the RNA sequence. April, a month later, the second mRNA vaccine phase one trial began. This was the Pfizer vaccine. By July, both of these mRNA vaccines began phase three trials. This is unheard of. Uh, maybe, maybe Jenner way back when got to phase three trials really quickly, but not in our lifetime. So this is remarkable. Again, to recap, there are five types of vaccines and, uh, that's because I take virus and subdivide it into dead inactivated vaccines, uh, whole virus and uh, the attenuated live vaccines. So if we add those together, there's five types. But right now we're looking at nucleic acid, specifically mRNA vaccines. Let's start with a few facts. Basically, an RNA vaccine is just an RNA strand coding for a pathogen-specific antigen, maybe like the spike protein in the case of COVID-2. The optimal route for delivery of this RNA isn't yet known, but here are a few approaches they've been using. One is just uh, take a syringe injection, needle it right into the skin in solution. Number two is injecting into the blood, muscle, lymph node, or directly into organs. Sounds a little invasive and uh, painful. Or three is a nasal spray. And they're working on, on all of these. RNA is usually delivered via a lipid nanoparticle. The RNA is unstable, usually in, in solution for uh, an extended period of time, and that would include after injection. So to stabilize the RNA, a lipid nanoparticle is used. The RNA viruses have uh, shown a lot of promise uh, using these techniques, at least for Zika and cytomegalovirus, but they haven't been extended into uh, humans yet until now. Now, once the RNA enters the cells, then the cells use this RNA to produce the antigen. Basically, it's just the blueprint. The antigen is then displayed on the cell uh, on the surface where it causes an immune response. So basically, we're injecting the blueprint in. The host machinery factory is being used to make what we code for, what we injected, which is the spike protein. And the cell treats it as if it's any other cell surface protein exports it to the surface. Now, there's two types of RNA vaccines, and we'll just have one slightly technical slide illustrated on the top and bottom of the figure on the right. The first is a non-replicating mRNA vaccine. This is the most simple, and this is what we're dealing with now with COVID. It's just an mRNA is packaged, injected into the body, taken up by cells, the antigen's made. It's got a definite half-life, and as does the cell, which takes up the RNA. The other type of RNA vaccine I'll present just for your information is a self-replicating RNA. This is a more complex vaccination. The mRNA strands packaged with additional RNA strands that allow it to be copied once it's taken up by the cells. So it goes through replication, through an RNA replicase. It leads to more antigen being made in a more robust immune response than just a single blueprint but it's more complicated and uh, it would take a little longer to develop. So let's look at the two vaccines that are at the forefront of our SARS-CoV-2 armamentarium. The first is the Moderna. Um, Moderna is a company working with NIH. It's called mRNA-1273, and maybe there will be a classier name when they start marketing it. Codes for the entire spike protein. Now, they added a couple prolines, so they did a little genetic engineering to lock it into a native pre-fusion configuration. Once SARS-CoV-2 comes into a cell and the spike protein is expressed, it's a slightly different 
uh, configuration. So they wanted to achieve the configuration that's achieved on the virus itself because when you're exposed to virus, that's how you're going to be seeing it. So that was important. They did a little engineering. They locked it into place using these prolines, and it mimics the spike protein on the virus more accurately. This one uses a lipid uh, nanoparticle for stabilization as well. Actually, it's been looked at in the New England Journal uh, recently, and there's a preliminary report to show efficacy. The second vaccine, uh, which is making the news, is the Pfizer BioNTech, which is a German pharmaceutical firm. They got together BNT162B2, and it again codes for the entire spike protein. They also added prolines to stabilize it, to mimic the free virus, so they did a little engineering as well. And uh, interestingly, they released results November 9th, just this month, and indicated a greater than 90% effectiveness in preventing disease. This is among trial volunteers who had no evidence of prior coronavirus infection. Now, um, it's inter at this point in time, when I'm recording this now, this first analysis only included data on 94 confirmed COVID-19 cases, meaning there's no proof yet that the vaccine prevented infection. Um, we have to wait until we get a little more data, but the preliminary data is very encouraging. And this too, if you wanted more information, has been written up last month in the New England Journal. They actually developed two RNA-based COVID-19 vaccines, slightly different configurations, and um, they went with the one that gave the most robust response, and that's the one that they just reported on. So finally, a few questions to consider. Storage issues. So mRNA vaccines need to be frozen or at least refrigerated. And what happens, as you can see in the figure, there is a um, total RNA in the in the gel, that's a, an electrophoresis, on the right-hand lane, 28 and 18S ribosomal RNA, which is prominent species in cells. And you can see the wide diversity, uh, the little smear there indicates all different sizes of messenger RNA in eukaryotic cells. In the lane next to it is degraded RNA. It happens really fast. There's RNases all over, and it's not a stable molecule. So storage is going to be big. It has to be shipped uh, frozen and maintained frozen. Second issue is delivery. Um, and basically, as I just mentioned, it can be broken down. How are we going to deliver it effectively? Are we going to use the liposomes? Are they the best way to stabilize the molecule? There are gene guns that can be used to shoot in RNA into cells. So that technology is still being worked on. Finally, are there unintended effects? Is there a possible immune reactivity or reaction to the RNA or nucleic acids? Uh, probably not, but we don't know extensively. We don't know long-term effects yet. But at this point in time, considering the risk-benefit ratio, uh, it's a pretty exciting time to be studying these vaccines.